2011 Chevy Malibu. Gonna do front brake pads and rotors. What you need to do is jack it up and support it properly. Remove the front tires. Those are a 19 millimeter for the lug nuts. And then you need to do is remove your caliper. Not caliper. You need to remove your caliper. So you need to remove the two caliper bolts. There's two of them, one here and one there. These had to be a 14 millimeter head bolt. So you need to remove those. And also get yourself a 10 millimeter socket and remove this nut right here. And then you wanna get that hose off of there. It's a little tight. Hold on. Okay, yeah, so you wanna remove this 10 millimeter nut, get yourself a medium sized hammer, hit the stud in a little bit so you can remove this out of the way so that way you can have more room to swing your caliper around okay and so then get yourself a flat blade screwdriver stick it inside here pry the caliper off of there like so go ahead ah so you want to look at your caliper see if it's leaking any fluid or see if the boot's torn and if your boot is torn or leaking fluid out of it you need to replace your caliper swing the caliper over the other side won't let it hang that's why i took that little bracket off right here so i can move my caliper around a little bit more freely i'm replacing the rotors because they pulsate really bad the pads aren't that bad of shape but i bought them as a set so i'm going to replace it all and that's what i'm doing okay next you want to do is remove your caliper bracket there's two bolts holding that on there's one here and one there and those are a 15 millimeter head bolt looks like that two of them take them out Make sure you hold on to your bracket. So it doesn't fall down on your air hose or on your foot. Okay. And then for your caliper bracket, you want to make sure your slide pins are free. So if they're free, that means you can take them out and clean them up and put some new sill glide inside there. Do not pack this with sill glide. You'll never be able to push the pin back in. Okay. And then you want to remove your pads. And then you want to take off your hardware and that surface in there you want to clean all that up and throw a fresh paint a fresh coat of paint on it and let it sit okay then you want to get your rotor off i'm replacing these rotors you also want to make sure that your hub bearings are nice and clean. You know, what you need to do is clean them up because you don't want no rust on there. Create high and low spots. Okay. I got to clean that up. Clean up your caliper pin slides. Roll them in some uh, sill glide. Stick them in there. Clean up your brackets. And put some paint on them and let them sit next what you need to do is push your piston back into your caliper if you got the ratchet style to ratchet it back in it's awesome you can use a big pair of channel locks so you can use a c-clamp with an old pad and push the piston in okay this one should have the calipers replaced but the customer doesn't want them so clean them up best i can all right, next, what you need to do is get your hub cleaned up, put a fine film of anti-seize on it, get your new rotor, put your new rotor on there, but before you put your new rotor on, make sure you wash off the shipping oil, okay? Okay, cap a bracket, put your hardware in there, make sure they're bombed out and they're not in the way of hitting the rotor vent, 
Anyway, now I can get him in there. I got my rotor on there. Got my vice grips to hold it straight. I just got them on there just to hold them on there. They're not killing my threads or anything. So now I need to get my bolts started and snug them up. Copper bracket. The bolts are in there snugged up. You need to torque them to 85 foot pounds. They say 96, but I think it's kind of excessive. But 85. Efficient, you can do what you want. Then you need to put your pads in there. If you got a squeak indicator on your pads, put them on the inside on the top towards the rotation of the rotor. Okay, this one goes on the other side. These are in there. You get them lined up, they act like little springs, you gotta push them in, and there you go. And all you do is put your caliper on there, get your two little caliper bolts on there. And then you torque these to 26 foot pounds. 26. Alright. You gotta watch out because there's a little flat right inside here. And there's flats on the slides. You gotta match up with the caliper, the flat on the side. Right here. The flat, and there's a flat. The copper slides, the flat part's got to line up with it, okay? Facing that way and, and that way. Got those tightened up to 26 foot-pounds. Go ahead and put your hose back in here. Make sure it's not twisted. If it's twisted, then you got your caliper twisted, so you don't want to have that. But I right, put your 10 millimeter back in there and tighten that up, okay? So now, Go do the other side exactly the same way as you did this side. All right. And when you got both sides done, you can go ahead and put your tires on, and you can torque them to 100 foot pounds. Lower the vehicle down on the ground. Go inside the vehicle. Push the pedal, the brake pedal, to the floor a couple times to make sure you have a decent pedal. The reason is because you don't want to put in driver reverse without doing that because you will not have any brakes until you do pump the pedal a couple of times. All right, so make sure to double check your brake fluid let reservoir for your level, and that will complete your front brakes, okay? If I helped you out, that's awesome. Hopefully you can help me out by subscribing to me, and I thank you, and good luck.